Now I'm back to working on this Nakamichi BX100E. And this time the problem is as follows. Say for example, if I hit the fast forward, it's going awfully slow. And same thing, if I hit the rewind, here you can see the spindle barely, barely turning. It's got no pep whatsoever. But the, here, the regular play seems to be, as far as I can tell now, just off the top of my head, seems to be turning at a somewhat regular speed. I suspect there's something wrong though with the idler wheel. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this thing apart. First thing I got to do is shut the power off, of course, and then take the cassette out. And this piece here comes off. It just pulls out, evidently. There you go. Pulls out, and then I can more see better what's going on. And then I think this plate has to come off here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the whole mechanism out, which is which I can just see a lot better that way. And in order to do that, I'm going to have to remove some screws. I think there's a screw here on the top. Let me see. And... It's a counter belt. Take that off, and I think it's also held in on the bottom here. Now there's two holes here. One up here and one down here. I've got the unit on the side now, and I'm going to go ahead and take these two screws out. So now I'm going to try to pull the unit out. I got the two bottom screws here removed. Okay, the unit comes out just like that. Next, we're going to remove these two screws right here so we can get this plate off here. And in order to do that, we have to open up the, here the, the door. And I just pushed up on this knob and that made that come down like that. So I'm going to take those two screws out. So those screws are out and plate here. Just pulls off and there's the idler wheel right here. It looks like it's driven directly by this motor here. So it can't be a main belt problem. Um, yeah, looks like it's is this direct driven. Okay, and I suspect this might be the problem right here. Might be all glazed over and hardened up. I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at the uh, take a look with my little magnifying glass. So I took a closer look here at this idler wheel, and I mean it didn't seem to be all cracked up or anything, but it does have a good a good amount of like glaze on it. it seems to be hardened up um and also looks like it's held in like with a tiny a little plastic washer they didn't bother to use they didn't bother to use metal the motor here seems to seems to be turning okay i don't think that's a problem yep yeah. So I'm guessing this thing is um, got glazed up over the years and it's simply not holding. So now I'm going to see if I can't get this um, little washer off. So I did manage to get the idler wheel off with these um, screwdrivers here, prying off. But in doing so, I 
course dropped a little washer but that's the bad news the good news is uh, I see it down here I can get it out of course you want to make sure you put yourself in a position as to where um, the washer can't fly out or fly away and here's the idle wheel and here's the washer I guess I could put a little piece of tape on it make sure it didn't fly away or mark it or something like that so you lose it I guess you don't, don't want to do this work on like on a big shag carpet so let me take a closer look at the idler wheel okay I can see here that the wheel looks all looks all shiny I guess that is a problem where's that damn washer let me get that thing out of the way now here's the idler tire what I did is I took some fine sandpaper here I think this is 150 grit and um, I sanded it down it's no longer all shiny and I'm gonna put it back together and hopefully this does the trick so I've got the idle reel back in place and when I took it, everything apart first time what happened is I um, lost a little washer which I had to take off in order to get the idler off and now I decided okay I got a little piece of tape here and I put it on the tape and I'm going to put it get it into position and then just push it on with my screwdriver and that should actually have did it and there it is it's actually on there so that took care of that so now we're gonna see if that made a difference I've got the exact same cassette in there and Looks like I did make a difference. So now I'm going to get the counter belt in position. And then I think I can put everything back together again. Starting off with this plate here, which goes um, like this. And I got to get the screws. Okay, I've got everything in position here. Make sure I got the counter belt right. Make sure I got these LED wires here out of the way. And then let me see how did I do this? Um Okay, this needs to go underneath here. This and that. And then, okay, like that. Then I'm, I've got this screw lined up. I'm going to put this in, not tighten it down all the way, and then I'll get the two on the bottom. So and then the counter belt that just slips over that pulley right there. And so the last thing we do, we put this cover on. Okay, good as new. Well, almost. I think the hardest part was fumbling with the little, um, fumbling with the little washer, making sure I didn't break that and lose it, and putting it back on. Of course, I used a piece of tape, and then <clears throat> I took the cassette mechanism out. I th I just thought you could probably do it if it's all 
still in there. I just thought this way it was a lot easier. You can fold it back like this. Of course, you got to watch. You don't uh, rest it here on the circuit board and short anything out. But a lot of times when you rest it here, there's just enough space right there to put it right here so it won't touch anything. Or I guess you could also you could also lay something on here, a piece of cardboard or something like that, or, or a, a cloth, and then uh, work on there if that bothers you. So now i got to check out the rest of this unit, and but that's probably going to be the subject of another video.